our humble pride. Thanks for sharing in the celebration for the historic repowering of Palisades. Driven by ingenuity and passion and bonded through a diverse collaboration of shareholders, the repowering of Palisades has real people and community benefits and will have extended meaning beyond our industry. There's only one moment, it's right now, be in it. I'm gonna introduce uh, our president, uh, Holtec, Kelly Trice. Um, and he's our fellow associate, he'll kick off this event. So Kelly, <laughs> Kelly brings over 30 years of executive management experience of several complex business enterprises which spanned across four continents. In addition, and I think he'll tell you this is his favorite part of his career, he served in the U.S. Navy for six years as an officer on a nuclear submarine. Welcome, Kelly. Wow, thank you. <laughs> Welcome to Palisades. So I, I do have to let you know, I have to, so I'm new to Michigan. My wife is a Michigander. I'm a, I'm a different person. And I learned when you go to Michigan, the first thing you do is you have to use your hand to depict the state, and you tell people you're here, right? But a half of our team, you notice, is missing today because I used my left hand. <laughs> and so I'm pretty sure they're like in Wyoming now trying to find Michigan. So I just want to point that out. So it's my fault if anybody's missing. Thank you for being here today. And I, I do want to tell you Dr. Singh sends his regrets. Dr. Singh is, is dealing with a medical ailment right now. He's fine. But... He didn't feel like he could travel and give it to everybody. So I appreciate you guys taking the, the uh, notice to that. I want to be be begin by recognizing the hard work of the Palisades team that's here. So congratulations to you all. And, and I know you know we have the Secretary of Energy and the Governor here today, and along with a lot of the distinguished staff. I do want to point out, though, that this team, 200 of them stayed, even after this plant was shut down. So that's a big deal. And they believed, I, I know we're north of 300, we've hired over 100 people, some 50% of them back, but ongoing. I wanna welcome and thank the labor union representatives that are here, your partnership has been instrumental in this process. I also wanna thank the guests from the federal, state, tribal, and local governments, thank you for supporting this journey. To the local community who's been steadfast throughout this and unwavering, I know we have Wolverine Power here and Hoosier Energy here, which made this possible, and they are our, the power provider or the power takers that we're going to be buying 100% of the capacity of this plant, literally keeping the lights on. So thank you to Wolverine and Hoosier as well. <laughs> Today we gather to celebrate a historic milestone, the first time in U.S. history Palisades is poised to restart and resume full power operations with a couple of little bit of details to work out first. This will be a safe, clean, reliable energy source, and I think most of you know this was a column one plant, and it ran at 98% capacity, which is even in nuclear, that is a good performance. And I, I, I'm not sure you know, and, I'm not, and I didn't tell the secretary and the governor, but you are standing on the exact spot where the first two SMRs will be built as well. Um, in fact, we're starting, we're starting tree clearing tomorrow, actually. By repowering Palisades, we are ensuring the vital part of energy in the landscape for decades to come, jobs, economic growth, carbon-free, baseload electricity to power homes, businesses, and as my son would say, his Wi-Fi. This would not be possible without the vision of the governor. Governor Whitmer, we thank you very much for your support. Steadfast. The Biden-Harris administration also has been steadfast in support and moved the earth to help us finance this deal under the Department of Energy and the Secretary herself. And next, I want to introduce Mark Johnson. Mark is from the Palisades Operations Team. in training to be a licensed operator and a member of the UWUA. So thank you, Mark. Please. <laughs> thank you, Kelly. Uh, and where is Nick? Nick, Nick, oh, there you go, Nick. 
Um, Nick, I want to thank you, too, for affording me this opportunity to exercise one of most people's favorite skill or activity, public speaking. <laughs> so um, it's not every day you get to practice this skill in front of um, all of my peers, all my supervisors, um, the site vice president, the GMPO, um, the president of our nuclear generation, Kelly Price. Uh, Kelly Trice, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and double bonus, you get to practice this in front of our uh, governor and our US uh, Secretary of Energy. So no pressure at all to perform. <laughs> so the restart of our Palisades nuclear power plant. It has been a bit of a journey the past two years, going from operating to decommissioning to preparing for some decommissioning activities and holding off on some other activities to, hey, there's a slim chance that we actually might be restarting the plant to me standing here today on this historic day. The fact that I'm able to stand here and represent our team proudly for this occasion is partially a recognition of all of our hard work and dedication as one of the top performing power plants in the country. Over the years, providing around the clock, clean greenhouse gas emissions free, reliable base low energy to the grid. The other reason I stand here proudly, and I truly believe that this is the main reason why I am standing here, is the recognition and a testament to our legacy to provide those things safely by maintaining our standards high, maintaining our line of sight to the core, and continuously keeping the protection and protection of the health and safety of the public. It's our primary focus. Whether, and it's not just operators at 3 a.m. Uh, performing uh, reactivity manipulations, um, it's security when they're doing their fire tours, it's uh, RAD Pro when they're doing surveys, it's electricians when they're doing breaker testing on safety related systems, it's the mechanics that are, if you look right back there, there's a mock up of our, one of our primary coolant pumps when they're in here practicing for a, uh, uh, an outage to work on the primary coolant pump seals. You know, it's INC techs when they're in the control room and they're performing different tests on safety related equipment that while we're online, could have the potential of actually tripping the plant. Um, it's also, you know, uh, insulators, it's welders, the people who work in the warehouse, uh, custodians, uh, fitness for duty personnel, even though they have a relatively interesting job, you know, um, one of the, the roles I had while I was in the Navy, um, I was a urinalysis coordinator and that was a lot of fun. <laughs> so, but it's everyone keeping that focus, and I don't mean to skip anybody, any other, other disciplines that are out there, we all maintain that focus and realize that our number one priority, <laughs> thank you, our number one priority is to focus on the health and safety of the public, and by doing that, we are able to provide that reliable base load to the grid in Michigan and throughout the country. So to Secretary Granholm and Governor Whitmer, as a father, a husband, uh, union member, Palisades team member, Michigander, and on behalf of the Palisades team, I would like to express our sincerest gratitude for your advocacy and your investment in the futures of nuclear power in the United States, Southwest Michigan, Palisades, and investment in each and every family that is represented here today. So simply put, Two words, thank you. Now it is my distinct honor to in introduce a leader who is leading the charge for clean energy future in our country and paving the way for energy jobs here in Michigan and across the country. Please join me in welcoming our U.S. Energy Secretary, Jennifer Granholm. Really great. I don't know what he was worried about. Really, so great. When you retire from this nuclear career, a role in public service, Governor Mark, after you're done. 
<laughs> All right. Um, it is um, an unspeakable joy to be here for so many reasons, uh, both as the former governor of Michigan, but as a champion for clean baseload power. And so everything about this operation is impressive, especially the focus on safety, the focus on professionalism, this uh, community's support for this effort. Uh, it, is, it is stellar. So I won't make you wait for it. Today, the Department of Energy is proud to announce a conditional loan commitment for $1.5 billion to Holtec to get the Palisades nuclear plant back up and running. <laughs> I know what this means to this community. Uh, I know it means jobs. I know it means livelihoods. I know it means identity. I know it means dignity. And, um, and I must say, the president knows this too. This milestone was made possible by the president's Invest in America agenda. It's an industrial strategy to reinvest in our country so that we are, the, we are in the lead in producing the technologies that will get us to a clean uh, power future. If this is finalized, and when it is finalized, this project is going to play a prominent role in two stories, really, that the president is writing for the country. First is the story of how we're building America's clean and secure energy future. Restarting Palisades is critical to that, because right now, not only is nuclear our single largest source of carbon-free electricity, it's one of our single largest sources of electricity, period. U.S. reactors have supplied 20% uh, roughly of our power since the 1990s. And even as we deploy more solar and wind and batteries, we're going to need more, not less, nuclear power in the decades to come. By our estimates, uh, to reach our net zero goals by 2050, we need to triple at least our nuclear energy supply. So this is this is a big win for America, a big win for the nation. And the second story that the president is writing here is, and that you are writing here, is the story of how we are reinvesting in American communities. Um, the president knows that we cannot build our clean energy future from scratch. He knows there are hundreds of communities and hundreds of thousands of workers out there that can power us into the future, communities and workers that otherwise might fear they'll be left behind. So we fought for this new loan program in the Inflation Reduction Act that reinvests in energy infrastructure. This provision of this agenda covers either repowering infrastructure that has been shut down, uh, and many of that means coal plants, uh, fossil plants, and use them for cleaner purposes, or making existing infrastructure cleaner and more efficient. For example, restarting nuclear power plants like Palisades, but also uh, converting those retired coal plants perhaps to nuclear perhaps for storage and renewable energy. But if finalized, this, when finalized, this program will be DOE's very first closed loan from that provision of the Inflation Reduction Act. And best of all, of course, this project is going to create and keep good paying union jobs right here. <laughs> Many in this room know this, but for, uh, for folks who may be traveling from across the country who don't know it, this project is going to create uh, 1,000 jobs, the restart will, and they'll be union jobs under a project labor agreement with 15 unions. And once it's up and running, the recommissioned plant will protect and support 600 permanent jobs right out of the gate, and half of those will be union jobs. And here in Van Buren County, those jobs, I know, 
represent both homecomings and new beginnings. Many of the jobs are gonna be refilled by people who worked here for more than 20 years. Welcome home to the plant. And many are gonna be filled by new nuclear talent that's, that's flocking to the area, that you're recruiting, looking to be part of something that's historic. This is just about everything. The president, our administration, I know Governor Whitmer and her administration want for Michigan's future, for America's future, a future where workers who defined our energy past will be powering our energy future, a future where young people never have to go far to find a good paying, high quality, future facing career, a future where power is reliable, is safe, and Michigan and America are leading the way. So thank you all for the incredible support this community has shown for Palisades. Thank you all, those of you who have served in our armed services, in our, in our nuclear Navy. Thank you for serving in this way as well. Thank you to the workers, the labor unions who have banded together to save this place. This is not just obviously a federal effort. This is a community effort and it is also a state of Michigan effort because Governor Whitmer has been an amazing stalwart in making sure that this plant stays alive. She has been on the phone, handing me papers, telling me we got to do this. We, we, you are so lucky to have a champion for nuclear power, a champion for Michigan, a champion for Palisades. It is my privilege to introduce her to you now. Well, I am so thrilled to be here today. Today, Michigan is going to make history. Palisades is going to make history. Holtec is going to make history. The United States is going to be making history. Restarting this Palisades nuclear power plant right here in Covert Township is just a phenomenal undertaking. It was a long, windy road to get here, but I'm so happy to be here. When we get it done, it'll be the first restarted nuclear power plant in American history. Restarting Palisades protects 600 good-paying, high-skilled jobs at the plant and 1,100 more in the community, driving $363 million of regional economic impact. Once operational, Palisades will provide reliable power to more than 800,000 homes and help us meet our statewide clean energy goals by removing 3 million tons of CO2 from the atmosphere annually, roughly equal to the emissions of 650,000 cars. So we've been fighting to make this a reality for years, and I'm so proud that we are here. A lot of my executive team and my federal team um, worked incredibly hard on this. When you say relentless, some people would say been a pain in the derriere, but we got it done because we've been focused. And this is really going to be a huge undertaking that the world is going to be watching because we're doing something that is historic. I'm grateful to everyone who worked together to make it happen. My bipartisan partners in the Michigan legislature were here, of course, and I'll be handing it over when I'm done speaking to Representative Joey Andrews, who's been a great advocate on behalf of this community. But together, bipartisan way, Republicans and Democrats, we voted and I signed bills to support Palisades with a $150 million investment in last year's balanced budget. And second, our private sector partners, Holtec International, is undertaking the challenge to restart Palisades. And I'm so grateful to them for betting on Michigan. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to see Chris in 3D. We've done a lot of Zoom calls. I am wishing him a, a quick recovery. But um, Holtec is really doing something phenomenal here. Restarting a program to build two small modular reactors here at Palisades, which could nearly double the plant's power generation, allowing it to support 1.4 million homes. And of course, our federal partners. None of this happens without an incredible partnership. Folks in our congressional delegation who worked with the federal government to secure this funding, and of course, all of our friends, Secretary Granholm, Fun fact, she used to be governor of Michigan. Did you know that? 
But we are so incredibly grateful for the Biden-Harris administration and the Secretary's leadership for saving this plant and jump-starting the economic engine of this region. A lot of people talk a big game about investing in America or rebuilding our infrastructure, but they've actually gotten it done. With the bipartisan infrastructure law, fixing roads, rebuilding bridges, replacing lead pipes, and I'm looking at, at you, Mayor Muhammad, on that one, expanding high-speed internet to all parts of the state and restarting nuclear power plants, the Biden-Harris administration has been an important, critical partner in this work. We're doing our part here in Michigan, too. Just as we built the American auto industry from the ground up, Michigan is uh, building a clean energy and advanced manufacturing powerhouse in the decades ahead. When I took office in 2019, there were two operational battery factories in America. Now there are 30 either built or under construction, including six right here in Michigan alone. We're building solar panels, wind turbines, transmission lines, and batteries but they all need reliable, affordable, clean energy. In November, I signed a game-changing package of bills to enact a 100% clean energy standard by 2040, lower household utility costs by improving em energy efficiency, build wind and solar projects more quickly, backed by the strongest labor standards in the country, and making uh, more American energy using American workers. Restarting Palisades will grow our economy and help us protect our air, our land, and our water. It'll also help us improve people's lives. When a plant comes back to life, it represents hope for a brighter future. It means larger paychecks, more prosperity, a stronger sense of community. I want to tell you a few stories of really telling, showing what this means. Erica Boyer started at Palisades in 2015. She left the state in 2022 with her husband and children to keep working in the nuclear industry. But she miss, missed Michigan. Now Eric and her family are back. They're home, they're close to their friends and family, and living in a community they love. She's reconnecting with old colleagues and reestablishing ties with local vendors in her role as procurement supervisor. Jim Bird began working at Palisades in the 90s after his service in the Navy. He was here for 20 years and transferred to another nuclear station out of state when Palisades was scheduled to shut down. He did not want to go. Both his kids were born here and he wanted to stay until he retired. This is home, he said. So when the chance came to come back, he took it. Today he's teaching and mentoring the next generation of nuclear power plant operators and he gets to do it right here at home. And Eddie Polk, who's got a similar story, started at Palisades in 1976 when I was still learning my ABCs. <laughs> he worked his way up over the decades, retiring in 2022 after the shutdown. But he's back, teaching new team members everything he knows about Palisades. Jim, Eddie, and Erica, and so many others are textbook Michiganders. They love their families, love their jobs, and love their community. And that's really what we all want to be able to do work that is meaningful, to earn a good living doing it, to be a part of a community, and to be home. So I'm awfully glad that they are all here in Michigan again. Today we're showing the world. Yes, let's clap for that. Today we are showing the world that when we, when we bet on one another, we bet on the state of Michigan, we all win. Being here at Palisades reminds me of the time before the last that I sh shared a stage with Secretary Granholm. The last time I shared a stage was yesterday, and I'm not talking about yesterday. But back in May of 2022, we were celebrating the FRIB at Michigan State University's campus. FRIB cons construction began when Secretary Granholm was governor of Michigan, and it finished during my time as governor. It was the result of a huge, important partnership between the state of Michigan, our university, uh, Michigan State University, and the Department of Energy, just like the partnership we're here today to celebrate. And since the EFRIB opened, students, researchers, and scientists have been pushing the boundaries of science. Just last month, an international team at the EFRIB successfully produced, separated, and identified five new isotopes never seen before on our planet. This cutting edge nuclear research could benefit healthcare, space exploration, energy production, and so much more. And it's happening right here in Michigan because a group of people 
got together, combined their talents, worked on a shared vision, and got it done and bet on the state of Michigan. And we're all going to benefit because of that, just like today's announcement. So I am really pleased to be here to see all of you, to see the exciting work that is being done. And I'm awfully grateful that I've got some wonderful allies, both in the federal government and in our state legislature. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to your state representative, Representative Joey Andrews. Thank you. Palisades in Southwest Michigan. How we doing today? <laughs> you know, uh, basically right after I got elected, I think this was the first project that fell on my desk when uh, Nick and Mick uh, gave me a call, asked me to come and get lunch, and uh, over lunch they said, so how do you feel about nuclear energy? Uh, and I said, well, I think if, uh, we, if we don't make more investments in nuclear energy, we're never going to meet our climate goals, and we're never going to be able to stop climate change, and God knows we need the baseload electricity. And they said, well, that's really good to hear, because we're thinking about trying to get Palisades restarted. And uh, that began uh, what has been, I think, a crazy uh, 14, 15 month uh, long project to secure state funding and align uh, all of the, you know, the necessary resources and stakeholders to get this project to fruition. Um, I'm a lifelong resident of Southwest Michigan. My, my mom's family grew up in Decatur. Uh, my dad was raised in Dwajak. We moved to St. Joe when I was 13. Uh, so I've, I've been here a long time and I've seen, you know, Southwest Michigan go through a lot. And I think like all of us, you know, the last 15 years have been uh, mostly a lot, of, a lot of punches in the gut for us locally. You know, the recession was rough. Um, the recovery was hard, and when Palisades was initially being announced to going into decommissioning, I think for a lot of us it felt like one more hit um, that, that our region was going to take, and we all, you know, I think sat here trying to figure out what was the way forward going to be. And today, to be able to stand here and say that the process of reopening this plant is beginning, that we're going to be the first plant in the United States to restart, and we're going to show the world what it means to not shut down a plant, but to restart a plant, um, is, I think, a moment that we're all going to look back on and say this, this was the turning of a corner for our region and for our communities. Um, the, the hundreds and thousands of jobs that this is going to create, the hundreds of thousands of homes that this is going to power, and the opportunities that this is bringing to our region. I can tell you all that last summer when we had the, uh, the first press conference uh, that was you know, announcing that this process was really underway, our office got calls within a few days of that from manufacturers, hydrogen energy producers, data center uh, construction companies, all saying, is this real? Because if it is, we're trying to figure out where to site things, and it looks to us like you guys are going to have the electricity to do it. You guys are going to have the infrastructure to do it. And so I can't be more excited to, to be here today, to be part of this project, and to see this through, because I really believe that this is going to be a transformative moment for our communities. Uh, and I know uh, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Secretary Granholm, if it wasn't for Governor Whitmer. Um, having those two advocating at the federal government and as the governor of the state for this project, um, you know, it's sometimes it can feel, uh, you know, at, at this level that you're one voice in a room, you know, shouting, hey, this is a big deal. Uh, but it's great when you have people above you who are also saying, yes, this is a big deal, we agree. Uh, and, and being here to make it happen. Uh, and the fact that the plant is going to be putting so many people into good paying union jobs, the kind of union jobs that built my family, um, that built the middle class in this country and is going to provide for our communities that pathway into the middle class. Uh, yeah. Uh, I just want to say again, I think this is the beginning of something great. It, you know, it's, it's the end of a long year's fight to get this plant started, but this is the beginning of something really huge for our community. And uh, I hope everybody here is as excited as I am. Uh, I was proud of all the work you put in. And, um, you know, make some noise.
yeah, thanks. Yeah.